Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I am here with Lloyda Lewis, who is the first Asian woman to have passed the New York bar without going to school here. That's the first thing, right, Lloyda? And then, of course, you're the widow of, I believe, the first black billion dollar deal maker, Reginald F. Lewis. You're a CEO. You're an author. You are an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and you've got a new book out, you know, which is Why Should Guys Have All the Fun? I love that title. I think, didn't your, um, didn't your husband have a similar book? That's right. What was his In book? In 1995, I published his unwritten or unfinished manuscript with the help of Blair Walker. Why should white guys have all the fun? I love this. Uh, well, well let, let's start with how the two of you met. <laughs> yes. When I passed the bar in the Philippines and became a lawyer, that was my father's dream for himself. And I was, I, he chose me and I became the lawyer. So he said, all right, my gift to you around the world. Wait for your sister in New York, study in Columbia, mm -hmm. and then come back and we'll start your career. Ah, okay. The best laid plans. I take it you didn't come back from that trip. That's right. While I was here, I met Reginald Lewis on a blind date. Really? And that's how we really met. My boss then was a Harvard Law graduate, and I introduced him to my sister. He was fast. They were going out on the date that weekend. So on the Friday, he asked me, my, my boss asked me, why don't I do a double date? I'll fix you a blind date. Well, for me, blind date, that's a new adventure, sure. And that's how I met Reginald Lewis on the blind date. Well, let's, let's, so I, I know that he died very young. You had two, was it two daughters? Um, talk a little bit about, uh, before we get into you taking over the business that he built, because I know that you basically got that business when he died. Tell us a little bit about Reginald and, you know, what made him so noteworthy. Well, First of all, why did I get married? Because I wasn't supposed to. I had, We're never supposed to, right? We're never supposed yeah, to. I was going thing. to be a nun, but that was shelled Really? Off. Yes. My father's dream for me was to be the lawyer, run for public office, so that when I was seven years old, he built a movie house, Lloyd the Theater, so that when I'm ready... You have I'm a ready. theater named after you Lloyd in the Philippines? The I love That's that. Right. So that when I have ready to run. I already have name recognition. Mm -hmm. So that was all the plan. But when I met Mr. Lewis for the first time, whatever he said, I had something to say. And whatever I said, he had something to add. And as I knew him more, I understood, you know, I'm ambitious, more ambitious. I am driven. He's more driven. Mm -hmm. I call myself AAA, as you can see. He's AAA. And the most of all is that he was masterful. And so all that, my dreams in the Philippines surrender. That can make for a very high-stress partnership, AAA meets AAA in a marriage, but it worked well for you. It worked well because I understood that I am marrying him not so that I would rule the family. Otherwise, in fact, I was not intending to get married. Mm. Why? Because I didn't wear, I didn't want to wear the pants in the family. Why would I get married? I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And so when I married him, I knew I will be his helpmate, but he is, he is his own rocket ship. Mm -hmm. So I had to sort of like see how best I can help him. That's why, I, that's why we, we, I, we made it work. So he died quite young. Your 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 um, youngest was still. They were teenagers, were they not? When their dad died. Yes, Christina was twelve. Mm. Leslie was nineteen. Leslie was at Harvard, sophomore, and Christina was just in middle school. So it was very hard for all of us. It was very hard for me. I never expected that, you yeah. know, that he would die. We were supposed to grow old together. Yeah. And so. How I, old were you at the time? I was also 50. Yeah. Yes. So so you did, did you know right away that you wanted to take over or what was no, your... No, 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 of course not. We never talked about it, mm. you know, so he was there. You know, he, he made it sure that if anything happens to him, his brother, Gene Fugit, would take over. So when he got sick, he made him vice chairman. Mm -hmm. And so when he died, automatic CEO. But there was always, he told Gene... Okay, go to General Colin Powell and see if he could take over CEO. 
I didn't know that until Gene Fugit told me mm. that was his plan. So it was never in the plan. So General Colin Powell was not available. We have to hire the best. So we did ask Spencer Stewart, mm -hmm. send us candidates. So this is their executive one. recruiting firm. That's right. Yes. And they, they honed they, back on you. They, yes, they gave me one and then a second one and a third one and a fourth one and a fifth one. So why did I not choose any of them? Although, you know, the company is known as the first black billion dollar company, they were all white. I don't have anything against with that. But they were all asking for a lot of money. Yes, sure. But when I asked them, so can you make it successful? We'll try it. I'll try my best. Try your, in my mind, try your best. What if you fail? Then the whole thing, Mr. Lewis' life would be over. So I said, mm. after prayer, December 22, I said, very clear, take responsibility, Loida. Take it over. And that's how it happened. It was not in the plan, but I think it's best that if I fail, I don't have to say, oh, why did you do it? Why well, did you there's do it? a rich history you know, of... It's me who's yeah. responsible. I think of Catherine Graham at the Washington Post. There's quite a history of women stepping in and turns out they're as good or better than... And talk about the state of the business when you found it. And, and let's remind people a little bit about the nature of what, how big the business was at that point. In 1987, Mr. Lewis um, bought this billion-dollar company on a leverage buyout. That means he borrowed almost all of the money. He only put uh, 10, 1%. That, it doesn't matter. He bought the company with the help of Mike Milken. Mm -hmm. And then it There's was a name that ran into some trouble in the 80s, but yes. came yes. back, came back. Yes, you know, I thought that it was very unfair for him to be, um, he took the fall for his company. Mm. They were tra charging him with, insider trading, but there was no insider trading there. So he pleaded guilty to stock parking, and the cost is around $120,000. But that's beside the point. He's a good man, and I will always be yeah, grateful to him. Yeah, and he's a f terrific philanthropist now. But So what do you think was your secret sauce as CEO? Because you're coming in in a state of grief, and I know this as a widow myself. It can be very hard. You're trying to deal with grieving children, and you're trying to make a living at the same time. I couldn't do anything for the first six months. I couldn't yeah. even say the Our Father, they will be done. I was just mm -hmm. catatonic. I couldn't really deal. But after six months, it's like the window in my bedroom was open and nobody said I opened it. So it's like, for me, Noida, get hold of yourself. The sun is out. The sun has come out. And so I said, all right, what do we have here, my two children? Mm. Okay, I will be mother and father to them. And then his book. That's how the book got finished. Blair Walker, please finish it. And then the company, because his life was the company. It has to succeed. And so when I took over, I knew that I was not, I never run a company. I was a practicing lawyer, but you don't run 4,500 4, employees all yep. over Europe. Yep. So what did I do first? What does the you know balance sheet, what does it, what? We're close to bankruptcy. Liquidation, I mean, liquidity crisis. We had no... Why, why was it close to bankruptcy? Because first, 1993, right, January, that... a strong leader died. Yeah. Secondly, 1993, a recession in Europe since World War II. Number three, the uh, summer of 1993, it rained in Spain and Germany and France and Italy and Norway. And 50% of our business... As, is ice cream, all right? So all of that, and then the nobody exchange. wants ice cream when it's cold nobody and rainy buys outside. It. It's yeah. raining. Yeah, yeah. So all of that, we were sliding down, and we couldn't even meet the the, the employee salary in the corporate office. So all of that came in in that first year, all right? So 1990, December 1993. That's when I said. Board of Directors, I'm taking over. And if they don't, they're out. Why? Because we have 51%. So, but they're all friends. So well, it's interesting it because you can come in with a lot of sympathy in a situation like that, or you can come in being underestimated. And sometimes being underestimated can be a secret power because people don't 
feel threatened by you. How did you find the reception? Because you, you, you have been very effective. You're a, you're a very strong CEO, entrepreneur in your own right. Um, what do you think really sort of helped you succeed in those early days? Well, first of all, common sense. Okay, our expenses is very high. Our income is down. Common sense, cut expenses, increase income. And that's what I did. By the time I finished, I, I, by the time at the height, it's $2.2 billion in sales. And our, our, um, our income has gone up. And mm-hmm. so all of, the, all of those some shareholders sued us, we settled. So all of that expenses is also gone. That's one. Number two, choose people better than me. You know, that's number two. I, it's not like, you know, I'm here, CEO. No, 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 no. So I chose people who were good, not only good, who were excellent in their field. I had to fire half of my corporate staff. Number three, you must all have the same values mm-hmm. and treat people as you want to be treated. So I think all of that together, common sense, okay, hard work. I was in Europe every month. And I thank my mother, my mother in love. Mr. Lewis' mother, mm. because she would come and take care of Christina. Who was 14, who 15? Was, yeah. Well, she was 12 when her father oh, died. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So I was able to go. So all of that hard work. Do you think your law degree or your background prepared you well for being a CEO? You know, definitely. How so? So I tell women, you know, if they don't know what to do and they're gearing towards law, take law. Why? Because it allows you to be not intimidated by words, by contracts, you know, even, you know, even, even, you know, anybody. Why? Because in law, you are grounded mm-hmm. by professors. You have to study hard. When you stand up and you don't know anything, what an embarrassment. So you study hard. So all of that is very good training for a woman who probably doesn't know what to do. So talk about the book. I'm going to start with, um, you know, it's interesting, you call your husband Mr. Lewis. Is that a sign of respect or is it? Yes, when he was at Paul Weiss, uh-huh. all of the white lawyers associate Mr. Corman, you know, Mr. Goldberg, um, Mr. Slattery. But with, with him, Reggie, you don't call me Reggie. Call me Mr. Lewis. And so for the public, he should be Mr. Lewis. Mm. For family, of course, he's called Reggie. And for his colleagues, I call him RFL. What, what was the message of why should white guys have all the fun, since you were yes. really the spiritual guide behind that book? Yes. I wanted it to be published because I want to know that here was a man of humble beginnings. His mother left his father when he was five, but he had ambition. He was ready to work hard, and he knew how to get it done. Mm. So so everyone who has read the book and knows, uh, they know that I am Mrs. Lewis, Oh, I read a book. I changed my life. I read a book. I aim for the top. I read a book and look at where I am now. So I knew that that would be the impact of this book. That's why I was very, very intent that it be published, and it was. And what made you decide to do your own version of this? Well, Catherine Graham, who inherited her husband's Mm -hmm. business and ran it very well, came out with her biography, autobiography, when she was 75. Mm -hmm. So when I was nearing 75, I left to finish this. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then I'm nearing 80. I said, Blair, you wrote Mr. Lewis' book, you know, half of my life. Let's do my book. And that's why I named it, Why Should Guys Have All the Fun? And I'm turned 80. Well, it's... it's it's amazing. Because, and how did you find the experience of doing your own story versus your husband's story? Was it as easy? Well, n- no. First, when I asked Blair Walker, all right, Lloyd, blah, 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 meaning asking me questions. And then I would say, This yes. is the collaborator. That's the collaborator. Right. He's my co- co-writer. So I was telling him in words, et cetera, what happened. And, uh, and then the pandemic happened. You know, I couldn't write. During the pandemic, I couldn't write. And then Why not? a year ago, I don't know. I, it's just something that um, I guess, I don't know. I couldn't write. Mm. Then when it was nearly a year before, I was 79. I said, Blair, I've got to finish this. I will ask Wiley, that produced my husband's book, to do it for me. And they said yes. So they paid me half, meaning to say, you know, for my copyright. 
And that really was what encouraged me. Why? Because if I don't finish the book, I'll have to return the money. I mean, that's like, what? I said I will finish. You, know, it's you like, do what you say, and that's right? That's right. Integrity. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. Do you see any commonalities between like, I mean, really, your husband had the black experience, you know, in, in America, and you had the experience of growing up in Manila, coming to America. Do you see many commonalities in terms of your experience and the values you got growing up? Yes, very much. What you encountered? I think both of us came from very strong families. Mm-hmm. My training, my, 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 I am who I am as I was growing up because my father was an entrepreneur. He was poor. His father died when he was 12. Mm. And he lived with a rich uncle who was very, very entrepreneurial. You grew up in Manila? No, in the province. In the province? His his business was lumber. Mm -hmm. And that's where Sorsogon had plenty of logs, plenty of lumber. And so he trained. He had two. I had two brothers ahead of me. And to them, he was so strict. But I'm the first girl. And so as the first girl, I can do no wrong. Me and my sister, Melly, we call her, she's Imelda, but mm-hmm. Melly. So I think that training and that expectation, I can do anything I want, was very crucial. For Mr. Lewis, although his mother left his father when he was five, she brought him to, his, to her parents, his grandparents, and they were very supportive. In fact, he tells me that he would be maybe seven. His grandmother would bring him to a woman's, white woman's home clean and he would be brought up because she's the babysitter and he would the, the white woman would say why don't you ask your son your grandson to help you no he's special so that's within his ear he is special so that strong family backing because in the end children will rise up to your expectation so if you say you're stupid they'll be stupid okay you're a troublemaker they'll be a troublemaker so you have to raise them up you know you're good you're special you're you're terrific. You're the cat's meow. Is that what else is the message of the book? When people pick this up, what do you hope they take away from it? You mean for me? Yeah. Okay. I you know I can speak for that. I was able to overcome any kind. I mean, Mr. Lewis dying, you know, any failures of business because after the success of TLC Beatrice, I tried to buy business and I failed horribly. So what kept me especially? At that moment when Mr. Lewis died after a short illness, my faith. Thank mm. God I was born in the Philippines. Thank God I am a You Catholic. still faith is still very strong. I don't I I am able to walk because I believe God loves me and God will not leave me orphan. He will not abandon me. And so in those dark moments I just try to see God's light. My mother always thought nuns were like the feminists of the Catholic Church. She herself was not Catholic, but she had so much respect growing up in Ireland for the nuns for because they were the ones that ran everything, you know. Absolutely. They ran the schools. They Let me ask you a little bit about the experience of being an immigrant. I'm an immigrant myself and you know, I, I the state of the country right now, if you were a young person in the Philippines, would you be as eager to come to the US? No. As an immigrant? No, because we were middle class. I mean, we were comfortable. We had, you know, we had... Oh, I don't a- think you were poor, but, but the, the allure of the U.S., it's always been this place that was, you know, you'd go to the best schools in the U.S. and you'd see people from all over the world, you know, and I think that the diversity in the immigration was the secret sauce. That does not seem to be as much part of the rhetoric, at least politically now, do you feel that, or do you think it's having an impact on how attractive we are to... Well, if I did not meet Mr. Lewis, I really would be in politics. I would become probably all the way to senator, because that was my concept. That's right. We're not allowed to be president, right? You have to be born at here. Time, <laughs> at that time, no. At that time, no. But Cory Aquino was the first woman president. Oh, in the Philippines, of course. Gloria, yeah. Gloria Macapagal Arroyo is right? the second woman right? president. And I wish she didn't win. But Lenny Robredo would have been a great president. So in the Philippines, women, according to studies, have a very high standing in corporate world. We have more women CEOs than many other countries, including Mm -hmm. the United States. So if I didn't meet Mr. Lewis, yes, I would remain in the Philippines. Because as I said, you know, we were, my father was very, my father gave us a very good life. 
Do you think it's as easy to be an entrepreneur here in the U.S. now, like when you think about your children or I don't know if they have children now, if you're a grandparent? You know, there's still, uh, um, you know, in terms of finance, look, Mr. Lewis got it. He was supported all borrowed money, $1 billion. That is 1987. Who among the African-American or Latino have done a leverage buyout? None. Yeah. So in the United States, sad to say, finance, capital is still not available to people of color, to women. Okay, so I hope I hope the, I hope uh, the finance industry lis- is listening, so that they should really give a chance to people like Mr. Lewis, because there are Mr. Lewises in the in in in, in the United States right now, 2023. And, and Mrs. Lewis's, like yourself, your book is on is on you. Let, let's let's end with just some of the thoughts as to what you want. Again, to go back to what um, the takeaways are, let's take this next generation of young women in particular coming up. What is your message to them? Yes. My message to women is because I myself have done it. Don't be scared of challenges. Take it. Why? Because you can do it. Don't think, oh, my God, it's so daunting. I can't. If you say you can't, you already lost. Okay, so you think positive. Number two, oh, my God, if I take it, I might fail. So fail. So what if you fail? I mean, failure is another way to be educated. So don't be scared. And then the last one is the sun always shines tomorrow. So if you fail, then you learn. And if you don't take it, what will you say to yourself? After 10 years, oh, I wish I had a regret. Do you want to live with regret? No. So that is my message to the young women who are listening to me. Take the challenge. You can do it. Think positive and hold on to God. And and you do not seem to be somebody who has the word retirement as part of your vocabulary. Is that true? Retire? Who wants to retire? Somebody asked me, I'm 50. What should I do when I retire? What? You're 50, I'm 80, you have 30 more years. So you can do things that you have thought you wanted to do when you were young. Go ballroom dance, learn ballroom dancing, play the piano, go on cruises, Mm -hmm. or volunteer in the church. Volunteer, there's so many things to do. Take care of, take care, you know, be foster family if that's something that you would think. There's so many things to do. The world needs you. Keep your giving hand. back. Exactly. Don't retire ever. I I think that's a good. I would like to leave on that note. Don't retire ever. So, Lloyda Lewis, the book is why sh- why should guys why have, should guys have all, all the, fun. the fun? An Asian American story of love, marriage, motherhood, and running a billion dollar empire. It's on Amazon.com, please. Order. Yes, March 28th. Thanks for joining us, Lloyda. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah.